All right, so we have Gang Wars and lots more secrets and changes coming up with update 2.0. Cyberpunk feels more alive than it's ever been and in many ways feels like a totally different game. So today we're going to take a look at some of the biggest new features you should definitely keep an eye out for when playing and how to make the most out of them. Starting things off, you can actually get a vehicle with rocket launchers for absolutely free without having to own or even play through Phantom Liberty expansion. And that is by simply just stealing one of these police armored vehicles that start spawning at 4 and 5 stars. And they come equipped with two weaponry types, one of them is the machine gun loaded in the front, but you can also switch to the back mounted rocket launchers and these are absolutely devastating they can auto track targets and they will unleash a swarm of these explosive rockets that will absolutely destroy everything that they touch normally to even get something like this you would need to own phantom liberty and complete some of el capitan's new car gigs to eventually unlock the possibility to purchase a vehicle that does have this installed but in the meantime, you can also pay attention to your existing vehicles because many of them, including the Xion and the Javelina, got upgraded with mounted machine guns on the front or on the sides. And these are also super devastating. They have a massive rate of fire and they can eventually cause almost any vehicle to go up in flames. Additionally, if you pay attention to bikes, this also has its own way of dealing with it. So you can totally switch to your melee weapon and ride with a katana in one of your hands. And this works really well, kind of reminds me again, like I said, a bit of Road Rash, and you can totally mow down enemies or pedestrians. It even works if you use it against vehicles, such as cars that chase you with enemies inside, you can totally mow them down inside and eventually even make them fall from their own vehicles. Also, speaking of the NCPD, one cool thing is that they made officers to now patrol the streets. So every time you commit a crime, for example, it's now much easier for them to spot you. They will no longer spawn from thin air. Instead, they will move in more realistically. But this also means it's much easier for them to start chasing you and for you to evade your crimes. Also, another cool thing added to them is that they will react depending on what you do around them. So if you pull out a gun without aiming it or shooting it, they will just act unimpressed and even tell that to you. However, if you start aiming at them, they will eventually start shooting and reacting. So you don't really want to do any of that. They will even intervene if you commit, for example, hit and runs like going over a pedestrian or hitting another vehicle. This will trigger a one star response. But during chase sequences, they will also try to stop you, like breaching your vehicle to eventually bring it at a dead stop or even put out some of these barricades to try to stop you if you're going in a straight line. But uh, you can also escape from them rather easily if you know what you're doing. So this is going to depend a bit on the number of stars that you have. But at lower stars, you can simply go into back alleys or break line of sight or anything that gets you out of their circles of vision that you can also see on the map, by the way, and stay crouched and hidden in any location they don't see you in. And eventually this is going to make that star rating go away. There's also going to be a specific item in the expansion that will help you deal with this even easier and evade them by changing your identity. But yeah, you will see that once it drops. Moving on to three massive changes have also been done to cyber implants. One of them is the fact that the attribute requirements are now completely gone and instead have been replaced with attunements. So now you can equip any cyberware on any build regardless of the number of attributes you have invested in that specific build. Like for example in this case you can see I only have 3 into intelligence however I'm still able to equip self ice and ram upgrades and all the other stuff that previously was only possible on netrunner builds. Instead, what attunement does is it provides an extra bonus like extra damage, boost to defenses or cooldown reductions and other cool benefits that increase the more points you have in the attribute that it's attuned to. This also means that previous implants like Mantis Blades and Mono Wires now have versions that will attune to different types of attributes and thus builds. For example, the basic version of the Mantis Blades gets benefits from high reflexes. However, you can go with an intelligence build and go with the electrified version instead. Or if you go with a cool build, you can go with the chemical version. And the same goes with the mono wire. There are three versions here. The electrifying one will get reflex attunement. The normal one gets intelligence attunement. So you can use it in different types of builds and create new types of loadouts that both 
can use this implant. But on top of this, we also have the tier upgrades. And every single one of these can be upgraded up to three times at least for the legendary quality. So there's the basic, the plus, and finally the plus plus versions. And each one of these upgrades will provide better stats, better effects, reduce cooldown, higher damage, defenses, and so on. For example, for and Devastan, you will want to upgrade these ASAP if you want to reduce that cooldown on them as much as possible and extend their duration. But again, it's going to depend on each of these cyber implants. You will, however, also notice that they feature extra modifiers at the bottom. Again, it can be damage, cooldown reduction, better healing effects, and so on. So normally they only have two at legendary quality. However, if you go with something like the driver update, they can now hold up to three, which is going to be quite helpful if you have a lot of these installed. You can even go with the chipware connoisseur in the same technical ability line. And this is going to now let you choose between three different versions whenever you upgrade your cyber implants. So you will mainly take a look at the modifiers below and pick the ones that are most appropriate to your build. Like if you're going with a melee build, obviously it will make sense to go with the melee upgrade versions. Oh, and two very awesome quality of life changes we have here is one, the fact that we can finally sell cyber implants at the Reaper Docks in case we no longer use them or we have duplicates. Not 100% sure this was added with 2.0, maybe it was before that, but I just wanted to let you guys know of it. And second of all, once you finish installing any cyber implants on your body, V will finally emerge immersively from the Reaper Dock chair, just like how it was in the old trailers. And we'll even look at any of the body parts that they modified. Like if you play something like Gorilla Arms, they will realistically just look at them like a new fresh install. Moving on to four, like I said, skill progression has been redesigned and now it is featured in its own particular screen. It's split into five categories following the five different skill trees. So we have Headhunter, Netrunner, Shinobi, Solo and Engineer. Each will be leveled up as you perform different things. So if, for example, you use a lot of headshots, you will upgrade Headhunter. Like if you use sniper rifles and all that. If you use quick hacks, obviously it's going to upgrade your Netrunner. And you will notice that many of these perks have also been completely redesigned here. And many of them, especially towards the end at level 50 and 60, are completely busted. So they can give you some massive boost to recharge and damage, even complete new functionalities. Like for example, the Headhunter is going to prolong the effect you have during stealth for three seconds after breaking it or entering combat like for example having the massive boosts to damage while stealthy having that for three more seconds is absolutely insane plus you can even extend the duration of optical camo and even increase damage also the net runner finally gets its see-through walls abilities again especially if you use the overclock so nice to have that again and also you have like the engineer which is going to make fury a very awesome um, ability to now also release various emp blasts you can totally create a fury build and exceed the limit of your cyber implants when speaking of cyber implants and progressing through these skill shards you don't just progress them by defeating enemies or performing different tasks but also by finding skill shards in containers as well as upon enemies so you will oftentimes notice this, especially when completing missions, but even more so during NCPD scans. Once you unlock or open these caches, there are a ton of them inside from like normal, uncommon, all the way to legendary. So the higher quality, the higher the XP they give towards that skill progression. But they can even drop from enemies, totally worth it to always check bodies just in case. Coming up to the fifth category, a massive change to the open world is the fact that gang wars can and will spontaneously burst in almost any corner of Night City. You will oftentimes notice gangs fighting each other or the NCPD or like having a bunch of animals attacking the scabs or the moxes and so on. I think that is pretty awesome and I even spotted a bunch of new enemies like having one of these, for example, like maelstroms with some of these mantis blades attached they will just start attacking some of the other guys or scavs getting attacked by the moxes many many of these and by the way you can totally have the police for example fall into a trap like leading them into a gang infested territory and the moment you do that you're going to notice that they will get attacked by the gangs so you can use these at your own advantage but moving on next, bunny hopping is back and better than ever thanks to the new dash mechanic you can find in the reflex skill line. 
So if you ever played Cyberpunk during its heydays, like during patch 1.0 back in the days, you kind of remember that V was much better at traversing the streets, even faster than any possible vehicle. Well, that is back and it's now even better. There is even a way to upgrade your dash to no longer consume any stamina when you do it in the air or if you double jump. So you can combine all of these animations to traverse everything much, much faster. It's one of my favorite ways to just move around Night City. Plus, in combat, it's absolutely devastating and a much needed upgrade for many, many of the builds, especially in melee range. Moving on to number 8, all the Netrunner vendors around Night City have been revamped and are now much more useful than ever. You can now access their inventories and buy some very cool Netrunner related gear as well as quick hacks. So many of these gear pieces are the ones that are most desirable of course, including the suits and the visors, plus they come with their own specific well, bonuses like to quick hack, upload speed and damage reduction from quick hacks and all of that. Plus, you can buy the higher level you are, some of the higher level quick hacks. You can buy pretty much all of them, including some of the new ones, and add them to your cyber deck if you want to go with a Netrunner build. Now, speaking of legendaries, crafting is no longer tied to technical ability and instead is now available for everybody, which means that even if you don't invest any points into it, you can now craft everything all the way to legendary quality. So weapons, gear, you name it, it's going to all be here, but it will still cost the same resources and you will have to yeah, unlock these by getting the blueprints the same old way. However, these are absolutely worth it and it works for literally everything. Also, one thing that has also changed in regards to gear is now they will no longer feature any mod slots. Instead, they are a lot more now pure cosmetic. So you will notice that many of the gear pieces have lost their mod slots as well as some of their bonuses. However, some of the gear still retains some of those bonuses, like for example, specifically themed ones like Arasaka, in this case, vests, they will provide plus 25 armor, so they are still desirable. Or if you get some of these visors, they can give you a whole bunch of bonuses to quick hacks or like to zoom speed with the weapons. It's going to depend on the type of item that it is, and it's all broken into different categories. This also means that weapon mods are much more important than ever, especially since many weapons kind of had a few of their mod slots scaled back. So this is something that you're definitely going to want to keep an eye out for. In fact, legendary loot in 2.0 is so much more abundant than ever before that you will literally find it everywhere as you level up. The number of legendaries you will see dropping all of a sudden at level 40 plus and especially 50 and then 60 is just absurd compared to how it was before. Like for example, even finding a Zhuo right here, one of the best shotguns in the game, randomly on some random table, full on legendary quality and tier 5 plus, which is just insane. But there's one massive change to consumables, especially the healing and the throwable items, and now they have gone through a massive revamp, especially the max dogs, the blood pumps, and all the other ones. Basically, now they function as a singular item, they no longer stack, and instead they will have multiple uses depending on your build and what benefits you get from the perks from different attributes. But in this case, they no longer get consumed, instead they work on a cooldown basis and you can improve the cooldown as well as the max number of charges. This is done especially through the left line in the technical ability skill tree, which is where you will pick all of these bonuses to improve the cooldown, the charges and the effects of all of these healing and throwable items. Also, the blood pump went through a massive change. Now it is going to be one of your go-to cyberware implants if you want to just have a dedicated healing button and don't want to use the bounce back and all the other stuff. Now, there are a couple more undocumented changes. One of them is the fact that for some reason, some of the time-limited gigs seem to no longer have a time limit. So, for example, the one involving Gary the Prophet, for some reason, spawned for me when I had 100% or almost 100% completion in this video right here i finished everything i was already in the end game even finished the phantom liberty and for some reason he spawned like he did in act one and normally his uh, mission chain should be done if you go by act two and don't interact with him at all and help him with his cause um, second of all, another nice change is to the way the messages with other NPCs work and CDPR made them to be more realistic. So no longer do you get instant replies from them as if they just type that in advance. Instead, you will see those 
chat bubbles appearing and you will see them typing their message before it actually all comes in which in my opinion is a nice way to make things a lot more immersive anyway this is it with just some of the secret changes a lot more are coming up so if you want to see more of that totally stick around subscribe for more and leave a like on this video i'll see you guys in the next one